Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Faces of Carlsbad. We're coming to you today from this beautiful Carlsbad Foundation. Uh, Jim Harrison is so nice to let us come in here every so often to film these programs. A program that's sponsored, by the way, by uh, Intrepid Potash. We thank them from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, they're such a fine organization. They do so much for this community and for us. Anyway, we're here where you will be meeting people that you've never seen before, people that you've known for many, many years, and we hope that when we're finished, you'll sit back in your chairs and say, gee whiz, I'd like to meet that person, or I'd like to see that person again. And who knows, you might, hopefully. Anyway, today I have a guest, a very lovely lady. Her name is Veronica Boyle. Veronica, welcome to the Faces of Carlsbad. Thank you. Anyway. I understand that uh, you were born in New Mexico? Yes, sir. I was born and raised in Las Cruces, New Mexico. In Las Cruces? Yes, sir. And uh, you went to school in Las Cruces? Yes, sir. I, did. I saw an article today that said the guy was, he graduated from three different high schools in three different cities, and I thought, that's interesting. I, I've never been able to do that, figure that out. But anyway, uh, you're grandparents and your parents. Uh, give us a little background on the Boyle family. It sounds like an Irish family. Yes, actually our last name is Boyle. It came from O. Boyle. They changed it when they came to America. Mm -hmm. um, my grandpa is actually from Chicago, Illinois, and he moved out to uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico to go to school mm -hmm. out there when he was in his 20s, and he met my grandma, and they got married, had kids, and that's where my dad um, he's been in Las Cruces his entire life, and my mom is from California, and she moved out to Las Cruces with some friends, and they met and raised my brother, my sister, and I. Oh, so you have a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. And where does your brother, does he live in Las Cruces? My too? brother and my sister both live in Las Cruces. Oh, boy, you've got some strong ties to Las Cruces, Yes, I do. You? Okay, then as you were growing up, uh, do, what did you want to do when you got out of high school? Well, growing up, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I liked cooking and sewing and, you know, uh, exercise, nutrition. I was always interested in different things, not your typical psychology or sciences. And mm -hmm. so I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it was actually when I was in college that I found the department that I ended up getting my bachelor's and my master's in. Wow. Did you go to New Mexico State? Yes, I did. I see. I took some courses from New Mexico State years ago, but I'm from back east, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, I'm a Buckeye. <laughs> but I've been out here a long time, and I love this state. And Las Cruces is a very pretty city. Yes, it is. There's one, only one problem. It's so close to El Paso that I get a little queasy when I go into El Paso because I get lost. I get, it's so it's it's a nice city. Don't get me wrong. The people so who big. live there are nice people. It's just that these bigger cities confuse me. Mm -hmm. You too? <laughs> yes, I do not like bigger cities. Well, and the funny thing was, I, I went to my first university. I went to was in Evanston, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine a guy from a small town, twelve thousand people in Ohio, he gets on a train, he goes to Chicago, and I thought, my goodness, I feel like I was in. The, Alice in Wonderland, you know, with those big, tall buildings. I had never seen buildings that tall in mm -hmm. my life. So anyway, you got interested in uh, the food type of things, of the food indus industry, correct? Sort of. The food, um, like I said, sewing, um, exercise, everything, the entire aspect of its home economics. Mm -hmm. um, my actual master's degree is in family and child science, so it's a little bit... What drew you to that particular phase of your desires to get a further education? Well, um, when I got my bachelor's, I was doing uh, family and child science, and I looked at doing family consumer science education, so I thought maybe, you know, I wanted to go into teaching, but then I found out about um, the master's program and how I can get into a position where it's not necessarily in a school and I can still teach on a community scale and work with people in general, um, not just children in a classroom, and I could reach more people with uh, aspects of home economics and family life. And wow, that sounds so complicated. That's like, well, 
you're a domestic engineer, you might say, <laughs> or an expert in, in the kitchen life. Uh, now, this drew you into this phase where you wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you go out uh, and meet people? And uh, what, what drew you, basically, before we get into that, what drew you to Carlsbad? Well, uh, I wanted to stay somewhere near my family that's in Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was looking for positions, I found the home economist position here. And I just knew that was the job for me. It's what I would love to do. So I applied for it, and I got it. That's terrific. Now, how did you find out about this? Was it in the newspaper? It was or? on the NMSU website. I was actually looking for an internship to do with my graduate program, and mm -hmm. I found the job. And it was... Um, just go from there. Now, do you know somebody by the name of Woods Houghton? Yes, you, I do. He's do. my boss. Oh, he's your boss? Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. What a nice boss. I wish I had a boss like that when I was growing up. Yes, I'm I very heard. lucky. You were very lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he's very good at what he does. Uh, so basically, tell, tell us what you do now that you're you just got started in this job, mm -hmm. right? First off, do you like Carlsbad? Have you enjoyed your stay? I like Carlsbad. It's different. It's smaller than Las Cruces, but it's very nice. Yeah. Have you noticed the heavy traffic that we have here, though? <laughs> On my way to work, actually, I've hit a little bit of traffic, but it's yeah. very nice compared to Las Cruces in terms oh. of getting anywhere. Las Cruces is much more difficult mm -hmm. to get around. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, so you got this job, and you've only been on the job. It's just a kind of, what, a couple of weeks? Yeah, I started on January 16th. Mm -hmm. And you've already fallen in love with the job. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, that's terrific. Now, what did your parents think about this uh, when they found out that you were leaving Las Cruces? They were very supportive. Were they? Um, I'm sure it's hard. I'm their first child to leave, but, um, you know, they want me to do what makes me happy and so they're excited for me. And I suppose they gave you a big hug when you left, right? Yes. Yeah, that's different from my daddy. To the, There's the door. See you some year <laughs> in the future. Oh, I, I, <laughs> my mother stood there and just shook her head and wondered, is my husband, his father, does he really mean that? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I think men are different. Mm -hmm. I think with daughters, it's, uh, I have daughters, and, and I just hated to see them leave. Yeah. And uh, the male faction, well, goodbye, good luck. <laughs> well, my mother and I are very close, so that was Oh, that's rough nice. Yeah, that's, that's rough. So, yes, we talk every day still, every oh, morning and every evening when I get off work, I go home and we talk. You talk on the phone? or do you? Um, in the mornings, we talk on the phone. In mm -hmm. the evenings, we talk on Skype so we can see each other and visit. And now, I'm not involved in Internet. I don't even know how to turn it on. I, as I told Woods Houghton years ago, I still use smoke signals. <laughs> so, so this is the bad part. But anyway, what's, what's Skype? What is Skype is an uh, internet program. Um, you can download it to your computer. It's free to make. It's a video call to mm -hmm. someone else, and you just have to have an internet connection. And oh, they can actually account. see you. Mm -hmm. as you can you're see talking. each other and hear each other. Oh, my, that's nice. Yeah. I guess someday I must might... I must learn how to do that. Well, maybe I can show you. That's one of the jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. So now the different phases of your job include cooking mm -hmm. and food, because you brought up a subject before we came uh, on the air that you were concerned about the diabetes program mm -hmm. in, in our country, our state in particular. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little background on what you've seen in the past that drew you to this particular phase in particular? Well, I had uh, a very close friend of mine. She was diagnosed with diabetes, and um, it just it changed her world. It made her life a lot harder every, you know, throughout the day she had yeah. to check her blood sugar levels, and um, it was just really stressful for her, and she didn't know, you know, where to go, what to do. She found um, a doctor who, you know, took care of her yeah. in terms of her treatments, but for cooking, uh, her nutrition, exercise, she didn't really have much in the way of guidance. And so when I got into the position here, I looked into starting a diabetes program that would focus on, you know, providing recipes to the community mm -hmm. and 
Um, like I mentioned, start, I'm starting a, a walking group for anybody who has diabetes who wants to come, and if you don't have diabetes, you're more than welcome to come and join us, and we're going to go walking on Mondays and Wednesdays at 5.30. We're going to meet at... In the morning? In the afternoon. Oh, in the afternoon. Or, or in the evening, I'm okay. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to meet at the beach parking lot at the Pecos River. Yes. And just go for a walk and get people moving, and hopefully, you know, that'll bring about some awareness for diabetes and get people interested in coming to our Kitchen Creations, which is a diabetic cooking school. Yeah, I want to get back to this diabetes in particular because I've known a number of people with diabetes. I had a very close friend who passed away a number of years ago who had diabetes. What, what brings that on? Have they done enough uh, studying about diabetes in particular that can, what creates this? What ticks it off? Well, some of it is genetic from the research I've done. Um, and some of it is the types of food we eat. If you, you know, consume a lot of fast food, it can be factors that lead to it. If we don't get enough exercise, anybody can be prone to diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, so eating right and exercising can definitely help decrease your chances of de developing diabetes, but sometimes you're just Too genetically late. predisposed to it. What about, what, what were some of the best foods to eat to avoid that particular thing? I would say very sugary foods, um, your uh, probably trans fats, polysaturated fats, really. You find that mostly in meats and products like that? In meats there are, say you get a candy bar which is going to be sugary, but for example the Twix candy bar, it has trans fat and polysaturated fats that they added to the oh. candy bar to it, which are very, very bad for you. Well, what's the problem with somebody who loves uh, to eat desserts? For example, I don't, I don't have diabetes, knock on wood, but I only eat two meals a day. I eat a breakfast and a lunch around three or four in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Food doesn't interest me that much, but I love desserts. Uh, you know, different types of pies or in particular, fruit pies in particular. Mm -hmm. Now, is that really bad for you too? Uh, well, fruit pies, if you watch how much sugar you put in them, if you make them, mm -hmm. um, they can actually be decently okay for you. Um, it's got the fruit, which is good for you, but if you have just pie and dessert in general, the sugar does add up in your body and your body cannot process it out mm -hmm. very efficiently, and so it'll cause you to gain weight or it can cause an excess of the sugar which can long term lead to diabetes. But I, I walk two to five miles a day. And exercise is great. If yeah. you're taking care of your body and exercising, even if you don't eat always constantly a balanced diet, as long as you try to take care of yourself and take little steps mm -hmm. and hey, walking two to five miles every day is great. It's yeah, because I have a, a pedometer on that I check every mm -hmm. night. And that's and, great. And I feel good, you know. Well, you know, it, it seems strange that Woods and I were born back in 1898. You know, we're, we're old, mm -hmm. and but we're still here. Mm -hmm. It's because we've been eating properly yes. and getting exercise. Mm -hmm. Is that, oh, well, that's good. That makes me feel good. <laughs> oh, and that's good, and you do feel better when you exercise. Oh, I know yeah. for myself, you know, if I yeah. go even, even just walking, which a lot of people think is, you know, not going to do much for you. It's not considered exercise. It actually is. Just getting up and getting moving will help because in today's world we do sit a lot and it's not good for you to sit all day long and not get up and move. Well, Veronica, I was just thinking about that because uh, I, I saw on the, the news here a while back that more and more young people are spending more and more time with computers mm -hmm. and instead of getting out and getting, you know, in, in my day, uh, at the end of school, we'd come home and we'd start playing, if it was summer, we'd start playing softball or baseball. Mm -hmm. Or if it was uh, fall, we'd play football. We'd get into a schoolyard and play football, keep exercising. And when we came home, we'd have supper and then we'd have to go up and study. Mm -hmm. And then we would listen to some of the old radio shows that were on with Laura Fanani and Dick Tracy and all those fun ones. But uh, 
we never sat behind anything except in school where we had to. Mm -hmm. And today they sit in school and then they come home and so many of them don't get out and, and do, do anything. And that's causing some problems. And then they eat too much. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed in recent years, and I'm sorry to say this, but I see more and more young people who are uh, tad overweight and that's not a good path to take, is it? No, it's not. And obesity in the United States, we're one of the highest in the nation mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, rates. And yeah. with younger children, it is a very high occurrence because it's way easier to go stop at McDonald's and get a Happy Meal and fast food yeah. for some parents than it is to go home and cook a meal or go sit down at a restaurant and try and order something a little bit healthier. It's just, it's more time consuming to do cooking and um, I want to implement a program to show you know cooking at home can be fast I can do 15 minute meals or 20 minute meals yeah. and some of the stuff it's not you don't have to stand there and watch it you can get in a, a pot on the stove and let it cook for you know however long and stir it a little bit and you'll be good to go and you'll have a way better healthier meal that's going to sit with you longer and be better for you in the long run. And a lot of these packages that, for example, candy bars or cookies or whatever it is in the stores, they will list trans fat, won't they? Mm -hmm. And if it says zero percent, that's good. Mm -hmm. That is very good. Yeah, I try to stay away from anything that, you can't avoid all this fat. No. Uh, I, I, I like to make my own cappuccinos and I'll see some of the containers say uh, fat not trans uh, fat, but uh, regular fat, uh, nine to ten percent. Mm -hmm. I try to get one that says seven to eight percent. That's well, even just regular fat is still better for you than, like I said, the trans fat and the polysaturated fat. Right. Yeah. So, if that's one of the labels, then you know that's one of the things that's in it. I would go with that. Than yeah. The trans fat. Well, that's the nice thing about warning us, and it, it, at least it makes us aware that hey, we are the directors of our own health. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do what we think is right, we only have ourselves to blame. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, now you're involved with all of these programs that you're get, just getting started on. Mm -hmm. And you're finding them very exciting, right? Yes. And when you start with uh, the group that you're going to be working with, where, where will these be held? Um, it depends on the program that I'll be doing. I have a Kitchen Creations, a diabetic cooking class that we're um, about to Yes, release to the community and get people to sign up for. It'll be in April and we'll have it at the Eddy County Extension Office. Oh, the Extension mm -hmm. Office. I can do programs in Artesia and anywhere in Eddy County. Um, I'll have to contact each individual place and see, you know, where I need to set up the program at. Mm -hmm. So it just, it varies. And so you'll have plenty of information in the, what, newspapers or radio or whatever? We do, and then on the NMSU website. Oh yes. Under the extension link, um, I have our, I've updated our web page and under the home economics link on that website, it has any events that I'm going to be doing and flyers that I've made to tell about the events. So I'll have that and then wow. I believe we'll be publishing it in the newspaper and getting it out there. I might stop by a couple uh, like the dietitian's office and mm -hmm. post them there and maybe in the schools if I can meet with some of the the administrative staff and see if they'll let me um, talk to some of the kids and pass out some flyers, get them and their parents involved. Where is the Eddy County Extension Office? I always get lost when I try to find it. It is on 1304 West Stevens. West Stevens. Yes. Oh yes, okay, now I'm, uh, now I'm with you. Yeah, that's quite an interesting building. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of nice things up there, don't they? Yeah, yeah they do. And we have a pretty big conference room, so we should be able to a good group of people in there. We'll fit them all in. <laughs> Make sure you eat properly so you can get into this meeting. Uh, your mom and dad, they have to be very proud of you though. Yes, they are. And uh, what did you say dad does in, in Las Cruces? My dad actually just retired from New Mexico State University. He was the director of the SWAT lab, the soil, water, and agricultural testing oh. lab. And then he was a chemistry professor. Wow. And then my mother is a first grade teacher at Conley Elementary. At Conley? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what's he going to do now in his spare time? <clears throat> he is actually taking care of my year and a half old niece while my brother and his wife work. And then mm -hmm. he has hobbies. Um, he likes to flint nap, which is making arrowheads from, um, it's from types of rocks and mm -hmm. other objects. And you take a antler and you kind of bang it against the rock and you make arrowheads. Oh, for crying out mm -hmm. loud. Now that's a lost art in this country, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Have, has he been adopted by any Indian tribe yet? <laughs> Not yet. You'll have to look into that. <laughs> and your mother's a first grade teacher, did mm -hmm. you say? That's what I was for many years, and that's a job that I loved. And I bet she does too. Yes, she does. That is her passion in life, is working with those kids. First graders are so sweet anyway. Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, I, it's amazing. and. What do you do in your spare time now to relax? Um, well, I go home and I like to bake, or I take my dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. What's your dog's name? Raina. Raina? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a female version of a brain, huh? The brain. Well, no, Raina. Oh, Raina. And so it's uh, Spanish for it means queen. Oh, the queen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. And what kind of dog is it? She's a blue hiller. Oh, they're beautiful dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Good guard dog? Yes, she's very protective. We go outside walking and she doesn't want anybody to get near me. Oh, that's good. That is good. But she can be the sweetest thing, too. It's yeah. amazing. Now, that's, that's nice. You, do you like to read, though, or do you just read mostly it, the things that you're dealing with? Um, I read a lot of things in my field. I am interested in uh, military topics, actually. I'm interested in psychological aspects of that, the PTSD, and so I read up a lot on um, uh, psychological problems. problems. We have a lot of mm -hmm. soldiers, sailors, and Marines coming back now with those problems. Yeah, and that's a, it's a very interesting topic to me. Both my yeah. grandfathers um, served in the military, and so it's, it's important to me, and I would like one day to maybe somehow be involved and help give back. In you have a very, very wonderful attitude that uh, I wish more people had. You, you want to help people, and that's very important in, in our history and our world today because a lot of people could care less. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of these veterans coming back from the Afghanistan and Iraq and wherever they might have been injured, and they're suffering a great deal. And I was reading the Navy Times here a couple of weeks ago, and and many of them are committing suicide. And that's something that you're in trying to find out why. Mm -hmm. so, so you could stop it before it gets to that point. Yes, sir. So if you work with the psychological aspects and you have the food that goes with it and the diet that they should follow, I can see nothing but a bright future for you going off into space. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm very interested in overall health mm -hmm. and well-being because, you know, if you eat great and you exercise and take care of your body but you don't take care of your mind, then, you know, kind of what's the point? You yeah. got to take care of your, your entire body. So you enjoy walking with the dog and uh, you, do you read any uh, other stuff that's completely different from your work habits? Well, I like Daniel Steele novels. Um, not all of them. Some mm -hmm. of them, um, some of them are, uh, you know, general life stories. Some yeah. of them are love stories. But mm -hmm. she's a really good writer. Yeah, she's a very famous writer too. Mm -hmm. Do you read mysteries? Uh, uh, no, not so much. The mysteries that you're searching for to solve are mysteries enough, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to get involved in anymore. Well, uh, working for Woods has to be a nice experience, too. Yes, um, he is very supportive of what I want to do with the program and where I want to go. And, you know, it's nice having a boss who is, backs you up. Yeah, he, has a, he has a good sense of humor, too. Yes, he does. And that, that's very important with, mm -hmm. uh, with the boss. Uh, I've worked with bosses in the past who did not have a sense of humor, and it was very difficult to put up, you'd, you'd go home at night, I'd go home at night sometimes and I'd say, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. But when you have somebody who's kind and nice, 
such as Woods Houghton. It makes you feel good. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, all I can say is that, uh, have you met uh, Mr. Lutman, the famous uh, man from Loving, New Mexico? No, I don't. Oh, he, yes, I'm sorry. Can you cut that oh, out? Oh, yes, he's a, he's a very famous person. Yeah. He's one of the few people from Loving with an English accent. I always like that with him. But he stays healthy, too. So he's right down what you were searching for, somebody who follows his diet properly, mm -hmm. who gets exercise. He never slows down. But he has to relax once in a while because that's important, isn't it, yes. with your program? Yes, taking a break and relaxing. You have to take a break. Mm -hmm. to have time for yourself. And, and those who are veterans who are coming back who have suffered through so many terrible things, that's one of the things you're going to have to solve when you go into this program deep, more deeply, right? Mm -hmm. To find out what can we do to get his mind off of this. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy task, is no. it? I think it would be easier for somebody to get him on the food diet properly than mm -hmm. it is the mental product. And it definitely is. A lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, mental problems, that they have mental issues, anything. They yeah. try and cover it up. So it would definitely be easier to talk to somebody about their diet. Do your, uh, do your parents follow your... Uh, regime, uh, re resume, I'm not resume, well, anyway, uh, the way that you believe in, do they follow what you're trying to put to the rest of the public here? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I learned, you know, a lot from my parents, and they've guided me to be who I am, so mm -hmm. I would say, you know, they actually kind of helped inspire me to become who I am and do what I do. Does your sister, does your brother, do they listen to you also? Uh, and some things. <laughs> some things. Uh, do they uh, do you f do they follow your eating habits? Um, well, I don't always eat the best, so I would sometimes say that they eat better than I do because even I break down and you're you know, kidding. Eat a bag I of can't. Cheetos. I do. Oh, I can't believe that. I love hot Cheetos. My dog loves hot Cheetos too. If I <laughs> eat it, she has to have some. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. That <laughs> So, we finally found a weak point here. Hot I Cheetos. do. I love hot Cheetos. Okay. They, you can have, um, you know, unhealthy foods. You just have to have it in proportion. You have to limit it. You know, if I ate a big bag of hot Cheetos, you know, every single yeah, day, yeah. it's very, very bad for you. If you have small amounts, it's okay. And that's what I want to um, teach in some of my cooking classes and some of my just overall health classes is that you can indulge yourself. Say you want a chocolate bar, you can have it. You just yeah. have to cut back on it and limit how much you eat. Well, when you get these programs started now, they will be advertised? Yes, I will do my best to advertise them throughout yeah. the whole community. And we're going to have them held at the Eddy County Extension mm -hmm. building and maybe in s somewhere in uh, Artesia and Loving? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think that's very important that we do that because it's been a long time in coming and I think it's important for the people of Carlsbad to realize that you have the path that you can give them to a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I agree. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yeah. Makes me feel good. Now if we could just get Mr. Lutman to follow our procedure we would be a success wouldn't we? Yes we would. I think so. We'll have to look into that. Okay. Because he overeats, he eats a lot of meat. And I'm a mm. vegetarian. Okay. And every time we go someplace, he said, Bob, would you like to have a steak? He always wants me to eat, break my habit of <laughs> being a vegetarian. You have to watch out for people like that. Do you run into people like that every so often? <laughs> yes, I do. I've actually met some vegetarians who try and get me to not eat meat. Uh huh. <laughs> I was coming to that. <laughs> I was coming to that. <laughs> oh, Veronica. Well, I think you're going to have a wonderful career here. I hope you stay in, in Carlsbad. Well, Be my fiancé and I are planning on it, so. You're what? My fiancé. Oh, your fiancé? Yes. Well, tell him he's a very lucky man. I will. Thank you. And uh, if he doesn't believe me, he can talk to Guy, Woods and Guy and all the other people that we know you now. And I'm, I'm really pleased to to have you here and I, I want to wish you the very very best and I hope that everything goes well and 
let's eat properly and tell that fiance to get on the ball and no more overeating, right? Right. Try to maintain the same weight for the next 10 years. Okay. That's, that's a good idea, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because uh, people who do that live a long time. Yeah, and it's, as you get older, if you can get in the habit of staying there, um, eating properly and watching your weight, it, it'll be easier for you to maintain that weight. If you let yourself go, it's yeah. harder to get it back down. You're right, Veronica. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being our guest today. This was an enjoyable program. Thank you. And uh, healthy eating. And if you see Woods Houghton, tell him I send my best regards to him, would you? I sure will. Okay. Thank you. And on behalf of Channel 23, we want to say thank you for being our guest today. And thanks to Intrepid Potash and wishing you all a very good bye and good luck.